Sunken treasure has from time immemorial fired the imaginations of men. But sunken treasure takes many forms. It may be the lost artifacts of a drowned city. It may be a classical sculpture lost with an ancient galley that went down a thousand years ago off the Isles of Greece. Or it may take an entirely new form, strategic minerals newly discovered on the ocean bottom, which open up a whole new source of raw materials to the world. Divers have risked their lives for the treasure represented by such mundane growths as sponges. But mostly they have sought the will-o'-the-wisp of sunken gold and sunken ships. I don't often get involved in treasure hunts myself, but I have done it from time to time. More than once, though, I have had to rescue other divers from their folly. I've seen men fight for their lives over a bag of gold dust. As I say, I generally keep my distance from sunken treasure. This time was an exception, however. So here I was, fighting a current of unbelievable violence, with the wreckage of an ancient Spanish galleon in sight below me on the bottom and a dawning realization that I might never reach it, or for that matter, ever reach the safety of the surface above me either. This particular treasure hunt had started in the Bahamas, near Nassau to be exact. I'd had a day to see the sights in this fabulous town, and then I had gone to work. Now, several weeks later, I was being brutally beaten by the currents in an underwater ravine. My objective was the remains of the Claridad, flagship of Admiral Esquibel, one of the island's ancient Spanish governors. His galleon had sunk in this funnel-shaped basin three centuries ago, sucked down in a whirlpool which had balked all attempts at salvage. I was trying to get into the basin the new way, along this trench, but the risk was proving too great for what was in it, for me and for Dr. Ruiz, who had hired me, because we weren't after any conventional treasure. Dr. Ruiz was the director of the museum in Spain. We were just trying to salvage a box of historical records. slacked off just then, though. Time for one last pass at getting through. I made it. Davy Jones must have figured three centuries was long enough to hold on to one Spanish galleon. Or maybe he just wanted me to think so. Ten seconds later, I was fighting for my life. And losing. A skin diver is almost helpless in cross currents of this intensity. He's totally helpless if he yields to panic. I darn near did. Time, however, I fought down the panic. Then I was able to fight my way up. Finishes me. Mike, you're not quitting, surely. I've had it. For this day, you mean? 
Oh, that's the closest I ever want to come to drowning. Oh, that basin. It was boiling down. You reached the basin? Yeah, close as I want to get to it. Well, it will make it simple to get to the box. You weren't listening. It isn't simple. Not if you want to stay alive, and I do. Mike, to come within sight of the box and then abandon it? Never. I cannot countenance such a thing. Well, I'm checking out, Dr. Ruiz. You know what the box means to me and to my museum. Why, those papers may represent one of the greatest discoveries of Spanish history. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. Well, continue your work. I will pay you three times what we agree. Money won't make it safe. You need special equipment. Of what kind? Tell me. It will be provided. Oh, just like that, huh? I, I will not ask you to go back to work until you have all the equipment you think is necessary. Now, come below. We can talk about it. Now, where is the chief difficulty? Here in the ravine or here in the base? Well, there's not much of a choice. One's about as bad as the other. I've been trying to get through that channel for five days. But today you succeeded. Yeah, finally. It'll probably take me another five to do it again. If I was lucky enough to get through those cross currents, it'd probably get me before I got that box. Unless you had special equipment. What kind? Well, I don't know if it'll work or not, but... Well, tell me, what is it? Or some kind of a harpoon gun that's strong enough to shoot a line down the bottom. A harpoon gun? All right. Tomorrow you shall have it. I don't know how, but next morning, Dr. Ruiz had the gun that I'd asked for, loaded and ready to fire, down between the walls of the ravine into the basin. Its warhead was a grapnel, attached to 300 yards of lightweight, unbreakable lifeline. Our hope was that the grapno would anchor itself in the floor of the basin, reasonably near the wreck of the Claridad. The grapno holding? It seems to be. I won't know for sure till I'm downstairs hanging on to it. Yeah, tie this off, huh? Secure the knife quickly. Yes. Gracias. For nada. Vaya con Dios. For the first time in five days, the odds against me looked even. Then I hit that man-killing current again. I mean, it hit me. So hard that only my grip in the line kept it from battering my brains out against the rocks. But my big worry was the grapnel. How was it doing under this strain? Grapnel held, even when I made it all the way into the basin, where the cross currents played crack the whip with me till my arms nearly gave out. It was a relief to let go, finally, directly above the grapnel. Everything went according to plan now, for a while. I found the box. It seemed the wrong shape for holding historical papers, but that was Dr. Rui's problem. Mine was getting it back upstairs, and myself with it. the wrong shape, all right, for holding papers. From its weight, it had to be solid gold. And from its beauty, it had to be the work of a genius. Cellini, perhaps. Dr. Ruiz would flip when I reported this find. Or would he? 
Was it possible that he had known about it all along? That the story about the papers was just a cover-up? But why? I didn't know, but before I delivered it to Dr. Ruiz, I was sure going to find out. You reach the bottom? Uh-huh. The box of papers, Mike. Oh, what about the box? Did you find it? No. I didn't find any box of papers. Oh? Did you find something else? Oh. Just an old, uh, old vase of some kind. Vase? Why didn't you bring it up? That's not what you sent me for. What, for the museum? Any such curiosity would be of interest. Well, uh, you wouldn't want me to risk my life for an old vase, would you? It may be a very rare piece that the museum would treasure. You will bring it up the next time. This afternoon, perhaps. Uh, I better not tackle that till tomorrow. I've had enough of those cross currents for today, even with that safety line. Perhaps if you took a rest in your cabin for one hour or two. Uh, thanks, just the same, Captain, but as long as I'm not diving anymore today, I'd just soon go ashore. Can Ramon take me in? Yes, very well. It won't take me long to change. He has found it. Well, then he'll find it again tomorrow. How else can he claim a share? No, perhaps he has another reason for going to shore now. Mm -hmm. Ramon. See, si, Captain. Take the American ashore. And yourself also. I want you to follow him. See where he goes, to whom he talks, eh? Into the dark. We shall know the worst by morning. It will not be the worst for us. Ramon brought me ashore very quickly. There was a welcoming committee to meet me, a crowd of native divers. I had to toss a few coins in the water for them before I could be on my way. I knew where I wanted to go, but I didn't know how to get there until I found a native policeman to give me directions. He knew, of course, because what I was looking for was police headquarters. It was a good thing I volunteered for underwater demolition during the war. I had a bomb as a spy catcher. I never once thought to look behind me the whole way from the harbor. It took me four minutes, no more, to line out my story to Detective Inspector Rigby and his official junior, Sergeant Sloan. They nodded politely at all the right places, but it suddenly started to feel very cool for Nassau this time of year. Oh, that's it then, Mr. Nelson. That's it. In effect, you charge Dr. Ruiz and Captain, uh, what's his name? Oh, Ibarra, I believe, sir. Oh, yes, thank you, Tanya. Yeah. With allegedly conspiring to defraud the crown of the worth in whole or part of an item of alleged sunken treasure found by you aboard the Spanish galleon Claridad and subsequently hidden by you in our nearest wreckage. Yeah, that's right. And why, Mr. Nelson? Why, why what? 
Why don't you turn it over to your employer? Because my employer hired me to salvage a box that uh, allegedly contained valuable papers, not a vase. Well, he may be quite disappointed if it doesn't. When it contained a priceless work of art, I doubt it. Well, he's the director of a historical museum, you know. <laughs> Not a gallery. We checked him out, Mr. Nelson, days ago. You did? Yes, and I'm quite certain whatever it is you found, he'll bring to the government house for appraisal directly you fetch it up. Well, I've been wrong before, that's for sure. I could be wrong this time, too. You won't know till you put Dr. Ruiz to the test, will you? Hmm? Do it. I'm sure he'll pass with flying colors. Well, thanks for your time, gentlemen. Do let us know how you make out, won't you? Yes, Mr. Nelson? <sighs> Never mind. Ramon was back at the dock when I returned there. There was no way of knowing that he had arrived there five seconds ahead of me. We shoved off for Dr. Ruiz's boat. Having agreed now to follow through with Dr. Ruiz, I was in a hurry to get on with the job. Everything seemed to be going for me this trip. Even the riptide through the ravine into the basin. The cross currents hit me again there, but not hard enough to break my hold on the line until I wanted to let go. Splendid. It's beautiful. Magnifico. Magnifico. Hey, you're not disappointed, huh? huh? I mean, uh, about the papers. No, senor. Not disappointed. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do with it now? You're going to have to take it to the government house, aren't you? Oh. Is that what the police told you to do? What? Well, they didn't have to tell me that. Isn't that what you plan to do with it? No, senor. We've made other arrangements to dispose of your find. And to dispose of you, too, my friend. Oh. Well, you might end up in the government house after all. Since when do you plan to dispose of me? Oh. When we are so far out to sea that even you cannot swim ashore. Senor Nelson. You will go below, please. Por favor. Gracias. For nada. Move. Stop. Inside.
They were pulling out all right, according to plan. And if I didn't want to be disposed of the same way, I had to make my break now. Only I couldn't. There was no way out. There was nothing that I could do until Ramon came back and tried to force me overboard. Just ten minutes later, though, the engines cut out and the cruiser slowed to a halt. At first, I thought the time had come for them to finish me off. And then I realized that another boat had pulled alongside. I didn't know what to make of it, but I grabbed the best weapon that I could find. Ah, welcome aboard, senores. Well, Anna. Oh, thank you, Dr. Reese. We have a question or two to ask your diver, Mike Nelson. Yes, well, Nelson uh, resigned his services yesterday. Oh, did he? Well, Sergeant Sloan here saw him leaving for your yacht with your man. Well, just to pick up his gear. Oh, he's gone ashore then. I think we can presume so. Yes, I'm afraid we can't. Oh, Ted, take a look around below me. Very well, sir. But you have no authority. Oh, we have a warrant, all right. Warrant? What on earth? On what charge? Conspiracy. To smuggle crown treasure out of the country. Tell you the truth, we have no evidence as yet. But perhaps Nelson will help us out there. And perhaps not. Echela Copa Nagua! Are you in there? Yeah, who are you? Sloan. We met in Inspector Rigby's office. Uh, stand back, won't you? These things open inward. Thanks. What are you doing, old man? Going to take a dip, old boy. Oh. My memory told me that there was a reef in these waters about 40 feet down, a reef surrounded on all sides by great depths. If the cup landed on the reef, I still had a chance to retrieve it. But if it missed, or if currents pushed it off, I was wasting my time. bubbling cheerfully to mark its position for me. I beg your pardon, sir. Yes, look. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Lloyd Bridges, inviting you to join us for another action-packed story of underwater adventure one week from today. <laughs>